Paul Revere and the Raiders is one of the most successful and busiest rock and roll bands in this country in the 60s and early 70s. Recently, while he visited Seattle, I talked with the lead singer of that group, Mark Lindsay. That group could be on the road 40 to 50 weeks a year, and I asked him, what was it like to be with the guys that frequently, day in, day out on the road? Well, uh, we, were, we were traveling a lot. We were on the road 250, 300 nights a year. When we weren't doing that, we were, uh, I was in the studio recording. When we weren't doing that, we were filming uh, one of a couple of TV shows. So it did get to be pretty hectic. There was about a 10-year period of my life that I wish I had cue cards on because I don't remember that much of it. It was just a blur. Part of that touring with uh, your fellow musicians is, uh, you know, being in, in close quarters, uh, sharing motel and hotel rooms, airplanes, buses, the stage night after night. Uh, what happens when you're on the road with a group of guys for that long? Sure, it's, sure it is. Uh, it's, it's just like a family. Uh, brothers and sisters don't always get along, and mom and dad don't always get along. When any, anytime you're in close proximity and forced to be for hours, days, months at a time, uh, little, little annoying habits begin to be big annoying habits, and, and I'm sure that uh, I was just, just as guilty as everyone else that, that rubbed me the wrong way of of doing my own little little things, whatever they were, but it's just, it's human nature. Give me a couple of outlandish things that uh, you did with the Raiders. So what, what story comes to mind immediately? Well, I just, re I just relayed the story of how we played in Tucson and uh, we're very feeling very full of Cheerios, I think it was. And uh, everybody was quite happy. Paul was driving. We drove, drove up to the, uh, the concert entrance and Paul missed a turn and we drove down to the garbage ramp, but that didn't stop us. We piled into the garbage and then had to, of course, roll in the windows and pile out of the garbage, but uh, that's one of the stories I can tell on TV. Uh, another one, um, let, me, let me think about this. Ask me another question. Okay. Ask me, I don't want to get too deep well, here. Let, let something else percolate while I go yeah. into something else here. A lot of changes in rock and roll. It's become a multi-billion dollar business. Uh, and since the 60s, you've seen enormous changes in rock and roll. Has it changed for better or for worse? Yeah, when, when the Raiders started, we were very lucky. We came along at a period in history when we were a working rock and roll band with a great, a strange sounding name and some weird costumes who happened to be here when, the, when rock and roll changed and the British invasion hit. And of course, with our name, we were a perfect answer for that. But at that time, there were, oh, say a thousand groups all making pretty good money and uh, maybe four or five groups making all the money, or lots of money, and then, you know, there, was, there, there were th three, three classes or three stratifications. Yeah. Now you have five names making all the money, and everyone else is making very little money. It's, it's become pretty much bipolarized, like, like uh, very much like uh, society is. There's no middle class anymore. And uh, all, the, all the people that are in the middle class are now in a lower economic structure, kind of. Mm -hmm. And music's that way. It's all done with, uh, used to be done, you could go in, write a song, get your buddies together, go in and cut it, and have it out on a radio station. If it was a good hit, if it was a good tune, you'd run out of your local radio station. If they liked it, said, yeah, we'll put this on and play it. Now you have companies that do, not, do nothing but program many, many stations. It's really hard to make that playlist. Rotation is such, there are a lot of stations that compress their music in, in, with, with digital, uh, Devices now, you can compress the time domain without stretching the, the, the pitch. So to get that extra minute of advertising, they'll compress everything and speed it up without changing the tempo, but, but speed it up this way so it kind of changes the feel of the song. Uh, most record deals are done by attorneys now, and a lot of it has nothing to do with, or I won't say nothing, uh, much of it today has a lot more to do with packaging, appearance, and shtick than it does, and, and attorneys, than it does to do with actual raw musical talent, mm. which is unfortunate. There's, there's a, lot, a lot of productions now. You'll hear songs that are wonderfully produced pieces, but the song is horrible. And uh, it, wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have flown uh, back when people were just into more of a, a visceral uh, yeah. feel. Horrible in what regard? Well, you'll, you'll have a song that, that is nothing. Well, when we were packaging, when CBS was packaging the, uh, the CD uh, compilation of the Raiders' Greatest Hits in the history of the Raiders, it's called The Legend of Paul Revere, as I recall, uh, they were going through other packages, and the lady that helped produce this thing said they were trying to produce a, the greatest hits of the 80s, and they couldn't find any greatest hits of the 80s. 
There just weren't, there were a lot of memorable productions, but n really no memorable songs. I mean, there wasn't any uh, Yesterdays or there weren't mm -hmm. any, gee, I'm dating myself, aren't I? Uh, it, it, Songs that you could, you could, you yeah, could really it, connect to the era. Sure. As a matter yeah. of fact, you mentioned production a while ago. When I was uh, doing A&R, which is artisan repertoire for a UA Records, people would bring me these you know, great productions, and I'd say, well, that's kind of neat, but can you bring me the song with just a piano or a guitar? Mm. And I'd say, well, you never hear it that way. I'd say, that's the only way I can hear it, because oh. I want to hear the song. A good song will, you know, it, it started with somebody strumming their guitar around the, the uh, campfire or beating and, on a log or what. It stands on its own. Sure. It doesn't I mean, have to have a 50, 70 string players. Absolutely. To make you can sing Oh Danny Boy, just a cappella, and it still works. Right. And it, it's it, a great tune with, oh. with a very poignant lyric. And uh, today you'll have, uh, well, of course, music has changed a lot. We, we have a new form of music. Rap music is actually the, the probably the, the only original uh, music since rock and roll. It really is, like it or not. And it's another kind of art form, but in in that case, some of the production. Uh, well, actually, uh, it's that, that's more lyrical based mm -hmm. a, a, as well as production based. But I'm talking about some of the overblown, giant, grandiose productions, mm -hmm. where if you pare it away to its bare bones, there's really nothing there but production and sounds and mm -hmm. and uh, thousand voices layer layered and uh, yeah. triple echo and tape reverse and phase, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, of, of changes and, and uh, what you have been up to, uh, you're coming out with a new album. What are some of the things that you want to do musically now? I never really thought I'd perform again, but a couple of years ago I got asked to go out, to go out and host a show uh, just as a host, a musical show, which I did, and then they said, would you sing? And I did, and it was kind of nice to be introduced as Mark Lindsay. Uh, and get a hand and sing a song and get a bigger hand. So I thought, gee, you know, maybe there's some more stuff in here. So I started writing and put together a package, and we just finished it. And we're in negotiations right now with the label, but it is hard. First of all, if I weren't, you know, if I had no background, somebody at Billboard did a comparison. They said it's easier, and they actually had statistics to back this up, it's easier to get struck by lightning in the United States than it is to start out as a group today and make it to the top ten. And we're going to take a listen to one of the cuts off the album right now, just a little snippet of it. What's the tune? Uh, we'll hear a, thing, a little piece of a thing called Someday. It's uh, that age-old struggle of, babe, stick with me because someday we're going to hit it big, or something like that. I wake up too early and stumble the 